Hello, my name is Shannon Kringen. You're watching Goddess Kring. And I'm going to do a fun video right now. I feel like celebrating myself. I've been having a rough time lately emotionally, not realizing that I am a great person. And I've been beating myself up for my flaws and fixating on my mistakes and, and the th my dark side and the things that are that are wrong with me and bad about me. Uh, because I'm afraid if I focus too much on what's good about me that I'll, it'll be egotistical and that's kind of sad. I realized that um, what I wish every single human being would do would be to focus more on what's great about themselves and not give themselves a hard time because let's face it, everyone has flaws and everyone has beauty and so why not uh, build up your beauty and your wonderful qualities and forgive yourself for your dark side and your flaws. So I am a model and an artist. I self-published a book called Art, Identity, and the Sacred by Shannon Kringen. That's me. <laughs> and I'm going to read from this. And I also, this is, um, this is a selfie I did and I did my own face paint. And then my boyfriend took this photo because he's a photographer and... He took this for me to help me promote myself as a model. So there's me being a model. And uh, I, I self-published this calendar to help me keep track of my schedule because I work full-time as a an art model in Seattle. And I model at about 20 different places probably. And then on the back, here's a an example of an abstract pastel drawing that I did. And I do very abstract art. That's kind of why I actually used to draw the model and now I am the model because I don't really like uh, creating realistic art. I appreciate people who draw from life and I model for some amazingly talented people and they do beautiful art. Um, I just am not interested in creating that kind of art. I prefer um, Hunderwasser and Gaudi and that kind of work and more abstract experimental design type work. And so here is an abstract drawing that I did. And also I created, I also paint onto shoes, which is on my website, shannonkringa.com. And here is a collage of selfies. I made a sticker. This is actually from my old phone. I upgraded and got a different phone. So I just put the sticker to save money. I just put the old sticker on the new phone and eventually I'm going to get a fancy schmancy custom uh, skin for this new phone. But for now, that's, <laughs> that's my funky uh, substitute for that. So I am somebody who struggles with anxiety and depression and mood swings and I'm highly sensitive and I'm kind of an introvert and yet a little bit of an extrovert sort of in a performance kind of way. And oh, also here is a, a shirt, a T-shirt that I silk screened. This is one of my abstract designs that I silk screened onto this T-shirt, and I would share that with you. So I am going to read a little bit from my book, Art, Identity, and the Sacred by Shannon Kringen. And I'm happy to share that the university that I got my BA degree from, Antioch University, Seattle, actually has this book available in their library for people to check out. And I sold about 30 copies of it, which is quite an accomplishment because this book is very expensive to buy because it's print on demand. I think it's like $80 per copy. It cost me $65 per copy and then I added a little extra so I could actually make a profit. So it's amazing to me that um, so many people bought it. About 30 people bought this book for me. So I did make a little bit of a profit. I'm very proud of that and I'm also mostly just happy that people uh, like my art enough to buy a copy of my book and have it in their home. So this is like a 120 or 40 page book and I created it for my senior symposium project for my BA degree. So I'm going to read from it. Art, Identity, and the Sacred by Shannon Kringen. This book is a container to place ideas about the connection between making art, developing a sense of self, and feeling connected to the sacred beyond the individual. I work improvisationally with cameras, writing, spoke, writing 
poetry, spoken word, drawing, painting abstractly, inspired by the shapes and repeating patterns that I see in nature. Being a spontaneous photographer and abstract artist is similar to the disciplines of meditation and spiritual practice. I spell art as art, meaning lowercase a, capital R, lowercase t, so it looks like art. Can you see it? Let's see. Yeah, see how I did it right there, art. So I capitalized the R because to me it makes it look like art, so I say in here, to draw attention to the aesthetic in the creative process being about a sensitivity to the literal shapes and unique creations that happen when one is engaged in making art. I enjoy how the word looks and see it this as symbolic of what art actually is. And also I studied graphic design many years ago and so I designed logos and a lot of companies actually use like uppercase and lowercase letters in different ways to create a, an aesthetic. Um, I am a dancer when I shoot photos. I move in a graceful motion looking into my camera frame until the shapes look right. I capture what is naturally there but in a way that abstracts it and makes the viewer notice something new and different about ordinary physical reality. Because of my emphasis on being in the present moment and my love for travel and being open to life as it unfolds without planning, I do not limit myself to photographing any one subject. I do many self-portraits which I call self-portals. I see them as doorways into aspects of my psyche and I want that I want released and expressed. I also capture urban decay, reflections, shadows on water, mud puddles through transparent surfaces such as windows. I also enjoy photographing animals, wildlife, water droplets on plants, abstract close-ups of texture, clouds reflected in water. All the subject matter is related as it's about the the Tao of allowing life to unfold in the present moment and being surprised by synchronicities and paradoxes as they arise and dissolve. Often I feel I wander and randomly shoot photos, then when I edit my work I see a theme and a pattern to what I'm doing. Um, this amazes me and informs me that my subconscious mind is speaking through me. I also paint abstractly and write poetry that I hear in my head. I use a similar approach to all mediums. It's intuitive and I feel guided by energy within me. My process is very kinesthetic. Some of the spiritual practice characteristics shared with photography are freedom from the sense of self, receptivity, spontaneity, acceptance, and non-attachment. Creative photography can be seen as a communion between the self and the environment with no sense of separation. A spontaneous photographer responds in the present moment and lets things happen. The photograph almost takes itself. My best photographs have been done this way, suddenly free and open to what is around me, having, having never seen that kind of light or shape before. My heart and mind are in love with what I see and I shoot when it feels right. And this really can't be planned. People tell me after seeing my photographs of shapes in water and mud puddles in chrome that they now notice things out walking they never saw before. Art can be transformational for both the artist and the viewer of the work. Flowing with life and not rebelling against it. Accepting what is pretty, pretty in quotes, or ugly in quotes, both equally being equanimous. All these spiritual principles are used in creative photography. Um, all my work, no matter what medium, is approached as improvisational, intuitive practice and not planned out, but felt in the moment and allowed to happen. So that's the introduction to my book, Art, Identity, and the Sacred. And I have different chapters like, um, let's see, chapter one is that explanation of that, and chapter two is abstract drawings and paintings. Chapter 3 is visual haiku, which are more minimalistic photos. Chapter 4 is nature. Chapter 5, urban decay. Chapter 6, self-portraits. Chapter 7, shadows. Chapter 8, naturism. 
And then there's some random surprises at the end. So this is a self-portal, self-portrait that I did after the Fremont Summer Solstice Parade in Seattle, which is a really big parade that we have here in Seattle every year. And it, this is me. I've painted my face and my whole body. And I rode practically naked on my bicycle with several hundred other people. And this is me. I had to lie on the ground to get this shot. It's a bumper. That's like a rusty metal chrome part of a bumper of a van. So if you notice, like cars have really, really cool chrome on them. And I love to photograph myself reflected in chrome. So I talk about what is art, what is identity, and what is the sacred, and how do art, identity, and the sacred intersect. So I guess I'm going to read this as well. So thanks for your patience. If you're listening to me still, thank you. Uh, I encourage any questions or comments that you want to make. I am open to your ideas. So chapter one, art, identity, and the sacred. What is art? Art is a language. Art is a way of expressing yourself and tapping into the dream world and subconscious as well as the collective unconscious. Sometimes art can be the best way to reach eccentric individuals who may be creatively gifted and yet have deficits in other areas of learning. ADHD, dyslexia, autism. Through the practice of making visual art or music, theater, dance, writing stories, someone can connect both inwardly with deeper parts of the self as well as externally with others, forming a sense of community and connection. As human beings, we all have many similarities, and yet we are all unique like snowflakes, no two alike. Each individual person has their own patterns in their fingerprints. To be an adult means being autonomous. The individuation process is helped by finding your own voice that is completely your own. This allows you to be differentiated and freely your own self. What is the sacred? The sacred is something beyond the individual self that connects all of life. This ties in with nature. The whole ecosystem depends on each plant and animal to play its part in the web of life. Humans are merely one species on this planet. Earth, water, sun, plants, and mammals all work together in this rich, complex symphony of life. To me, sacred ties in with what I would call spiritual, meaning that which creates and connects all life beyond the individuals. How do art identity and the sacred intersect? And again, I'm reading from the, self -pub the book that I self-published. Um, these are my words that I wrote, just kind of my philosophy. So how do art identity and the sacred intersect? I am fascinated by the paradox of finding yourself through losing yourself. Self seems to be elusive. When I look for myself, I can't seem to feel satisfied in finding it. When I am making art, I am in love with the present moment. It's literally a gift. When I surrender and let go of trying to find something, it usually appears. A line from one of my poems that connects with trying to find the self. Fragile sense of self, intangible desire for wealth. And another, ocean beam, come clean, come clean, manifesting dreams, inner energy, life force, come forth, black fire, feather rain, straining the stream of consciousness again. So like I write like um, words that rhyme that sort of pop into my head and I sort of playfully write them down and then I usually realize I think I'm just making up interesting rhymes and then I realize they're symbolic. So it's pretty cool. Um, I'm grateful that these things pop into my head. I feel like it's beyond myself that helps me create these. You know, I'm inspired by some kind of energy that's beyond just me. It's like, it's just fun. Um, so <laughs> I think it's a spiritual thing, but it might sound pretentious if I say that, but it does feel like it's beyond just me. And I think Tom Petty and Tori Amos have said the same thing, and probably most songwriters have said something similar, like, Sometimes songs just come through and it's almost like they didn't even, they just wrote themselves. Like they just listen, they just hear in their head something and they write it down and they're like, wow, did I just write that? It just kind of came through me. And that's similar. Art, identity, and the sacred all together are about wholeness beyond the duality of opposites. The creative process is the language I speak to amplify the awareness that my individual self is one with the river of life. 
I use my artwork as a mirror for myself and others to see and project into. The universe is one and yet full of seemingly separate entities. My art is my spiritual practice when I express myself and connect with the whole of life. Reflections are a communication tool. I am fascinated by mirrors, projections, reflections, patterns that repeat. I call them infinite, intricate patterns. From microscopic to giant planets floating around in space, we are all part of this amazing universe. There is order in the chaos and chaos in the order. I am interested in relationships and patterns that mirror one another, like the dendrites on trees that mimic the veins inside the human body. I see my art practice as a whole, a whole grain way of dancing with these repeating patterns. So I will say that um, some of my abstract art is, um, you could say it's kind of childlike and primitive looking, but I think what it, what it really is, uh, these abstract shapes I just feel drawn to draw. <laughs> um, they remind me of maps. I feel like I love riding in airplanes and looking straight down at the ground. And I feel like when I see patterns and shapes or like patterns and shapes in leaves. And you know, my mom is also a visual artist and her work is similar. I mean, she doesn't use color, but her shapes are like really organic and they are inspired by um, the, the sh repeating infinite intricate patterns you see in like plants and flowers and tree bark and you know the patterns in nature that repeat and the dendrites on trees and the maps you see in geography when you're in an airplane looking straight down and here's some of my my natural um, basically there's just lots and lots and lots in here there's like some self portraits there's some shadows there's some beautiful um, a lot of selfies there's some beautiful animal portraits I did somewhere in here, but maybe I'll, I'll show the actual photos in the next video because this video has gone on for a while, but Art Identity in the Sacred. So this is my book, and I, I actually feel really good after reading what I wrote. I think I'm going to have to, because I lost track of the words. I need to type this out and share it and publish it on all my blogs and my website because lately I've been feeling... Um, really low self-esteem and a lack of sense of self and then I realized wait a minute I I made this book I created this beautiful book you know I'm I'm an artist I'm a human being that has value and it's sad that I sometimes think that I'm nothing I don't exist or I I have no value and I beat myself up and have all of this like you know like I'm a model for other artists and I'm a full-time model which is a miracle in itself and I am low income but I do fully support myself through being a model and I've done this for 24 years and I'm you know really grateful that people keep hiring me to model and that I do a good job for them but I'm also an artist in my own right and so I want to kind of remember that and, and cherish and celebrate you know like my message to you the audience whoever's listening to me is to please please value yourself please love yourself please realize that you have whatever talent you have everyone has some kind of talent and I would like it if more people would value themselves and contribute and share whatever they have to offer and not um, spend too much time worrying about what your flaws are and what you're bad at and what you're not good at Temple Grandin actually the autistic lady that I really admire Temple Grandin look her up she emphasizes that that autistic kids can be helped my mom put me in alternative school which was really good for me because kids picked on me in regular school and they didn't emphasize the arts in regular school and I'm a bit dyslexic and I have probably ADHD ish kind of mind and I'm very OCD and so I have kind of an odd peculiar mind in some ways but I'm very smart but I tend to repeat myself as you can tell in this video uh, my, my brain is very chaotic and yet I'm very talented and so I have a hard time and yet I'm good at math I'm actually kinda of good at math for an artist especially and I'm left-handed but I was gonna say that Temple Grandin talks about how if you try to force autistic kids to be like other kids and then you give up because they can't you're you're missing you're missing uh, you might be missing that they might have talent like if an autistic person if or anybody if anybody is really good at math but they can't do anything else then let them let them build up their math skills if somebody's really good at art and music and dance but they're really bad at academics 
then let this let the kid um, build up their skills. And, st and, and Temple Grandin likes to say things like, you know, if a kid can't tie their shoes, let them have Velcro on their shoes. You know, they might never be able to tie their own shoelace, but they might have other talent. So, you know, maybe being normal is not what it's all cracked up to be. And maybe normal is to let people be who they are and find out what their gifts are. I mean, not everybody is extremely gifted, but most people, I think, have some kind of gift. And I feel like some kids maybe are, they fall through the cracks. And Temple Grandin is a great example of that because the doctors told her mom, your, your daughter's autistic, you know, she's not even going to be able to speak. And, her, and the mother refused to give up. The mother had tutors. The mother did all, there's a whole movie about her life. Look her up, Temple Grandin, you know, Claire Danes plays her in a movie. It's a great movie and it's fascinating. And thank, thanks to parents who don't give up on their kids because, you know, Temple obviously had an amazing brain and her mother had a tutor help her figure that out and, and work with her and taught her and they let her do things that she was good at. Like she was very bad socially, but she liked to ride horses and she liked to, so like she liked to do certain things with other kids, but she wasn't good at socializing with these kids, but she was good at horseback riding. And so if she could focus on horseback riding, then she could get along with other kids. So I'm similar to that. I'm very good at modeling. I'm very good at my artwork. I'm not as good at regular social. Like I don't like parties. I'm not good at, I'm not very extroverted. I'm not very good at certain kinds of social activities, kind of stress me out. I'm highly sensitive, but I'm really good at certain things, my artwork and my modeling. And I love music and I love plants and I love animals and all of that calms me down. But if I go out in the world and I try to be like a regular person and do a bunch of regular things, I tend to get really stressed out. So I have made my life so that I mostly focus on what I'm good at. And I try to, unless I have to do something I'm really bad at, I try to just focus on what I'm already good at. So, okay. So I hope this video inspired you. So Art, Identity, and the Sacred is my book. My name is Shannon Kringen. And... I think everybody has a gift and everybody has flaws and I think our education system would be better if we focused on helping kids figure out what their talents are and help them develop those talents and try to not fix their deficits but try to cope with the deficits that somebody has and emphasize what somebody is actually good at and help them work on improving that skill. That's what I think. It's worked for me. It's, it's how I survive, basically. Thanks for listening. Visit my website, shannonkringen.com, and check out my artwork and my various creative expression. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Bye.